to get accomplished during the extra time with the open day offensively? You know, when you're getting better every week like we are, um, sometimes I dread the open day because you want to, you want to get back out on the field and stay in the rhythm that you're in. But um, there are benefits to it also if you handle it the right way. And I think uh, one of them is uh, you get to kind of go back to basics and, and uh, refocus on fundamentals and on technique little things that maybe you don't have quite as much time to address when you're in the, in the you know, the schedule of a regular work week we got to play on Saturday. And then, you know, I, th I think the other thing is uh, uh, you get a little rest time and a little healing time. And I think that was really good for our team. So those are probably the two biggest benefits for us in the off week. Do you use extra week to prepare for teams later in the schedule at all? No, I, I, we really don't look ahead. I mean, I, there's never one more important than the next one. So, uh, you know, you may earmark some big game down the, down the line uh, on the schedule, but that game's never as important as if you don't take care of the most immediate. So there's been absolutely no focus on anybody except Virginia Tech over the course of the last two weeks. Bill, given the way that Sam played the first six weeks, I'm curious, what about your approach and your relationship with Sam has allowed him to – navigate some of those challenges that come with being a true freshman quarterback? Well, I, I've always felt, I don't know how other coaches feel, but I, I, I've always felt like uh, having a good personal relationship with the quarterback that's playing and running the offense has always been a benefit for me and for the teams that I've been a part of because, you, you know, you get to a point where uh, I know what he's going to do on certain plays, which might be different than maybe coaching a different quarterback. Different quarterbacks think differently, they see things differently, they have different confidence levels and different aspects of their ability. And I think I have a really good feel right now for um, where Sam is and what he'll do. And I, I think he would tell you he probably feels the same way about me. He pretty much knows what I'm gonna call. When we go call games together, you know, he can, he can call most of them. He knows what I'm gonna call. And so there's a benefit there because, uh, you know, there's more, there's more uh, of a personal relationship and, and, and it's easy to communicate during the game. It's easy to communicate non-verbally during the game with just certain signals, and a smile or a tap on my head. or You know, those are things that happen from spending so much time with each other. You know, and so I think it's, it's a huge benefit for Sam and I. And now I'm trying to develop that with Vince a little bit, so I've been meeting with the two of them individually like, like I always do. Is that, the, is that a key component in why you're on the field and set up in the it's a big reason why I'm on the field. I, no, no question about it. It's, uh, I think I'm detached from, from the quarterback and from the rest of the team when I'm in the booths. You know, and as I said, when, when, when you all asked this in, in the preseason, you have to have uh, confidence in the guys that are up in the booths, which we do, obviously. And um, that it's really a non-issue after that. I, I, don't, I don't know that I would ever go in the booth. I would find a qualified guy to handle what we need to do upstairs because I think the relationships and being down on the field with the guys that are executing the game plan and, and being a part of that communication is, is absolutely vital. When's the last time you were in the booth? Ooh, the last time I was in the booth was uh, unwillingly in 2009. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the last time. How in, in particular has Sam gotten better since we uh, won? You know, Sam, uh, the fun thing about Sam is I keep challenging him and he keeps responding. And so, and, and we're doing that with the team. We're challenging the offense, Jay's challenging the defense, the coach is challenging the staff and the players to, to do more. And, and uh, But from a, from a quarterback standpoint, uh, we're, we're not giving him more to think about each week. But, you know, there's one-on-one, four verticals, and there's, there's doing the good thing. And then there's, you know, there's an advanced four verticals as, a, as, an, as an example. And, and being a little bit more progressive and understanding some things that you learn from experience down the road. And Sam's getting into those things now. You know, when we, when we teach each play in the offense, we said, look, if you want to be good at this play, here's what we need to do, boom, boom, boom. If you really want to be great, here's what you do, boom, boom. And we, and we got to advance ourselves. You, you're not ready to teach those advanced things early in the spring when you're installing. Man, most of the time, you're not even willing to do that in August because they're just not ready to handle it. But. We're beyond the 101 stage. I mean, Sam is, uh, he studies the game, he cares, he's passionate about it, and that's all part of what makes him as good as he is right now. And, and we still have things we need to get better at, but um, I really like where the process
process is, and I like the fact that he accepts just about every challenge I give him. You ever step back and think about how nice it is to have a, a really good quarterback at the stage with, with two more years? Think about other, other teams that really struggle to find a guy. Is that you know, I, and I said this earlier too. I'm, I've been really spoiled. I mean, I, I've had, uh, I've enjoyed coaching most of the quarterbacks I've had in my career. Most of them have been really, really good. And I've just been blessed with, uh, you know, having some guys on the roster that can execute what we do. And, and so I, you know, each one of them is individual, and each one is a little different. So you got to coach them a little bit differently. Um, that's the other thing that maybe the personal time with Sam has afforded me is just. It's given me the opportunity to realize how I need to coach Sam. I'm coaching Sam and Vince differently right now. That's why I meet with him individually. But, but yeah, it's, you know, I think right now during the season, you have a hard time stepping back and appreciating anything because you're focused on the next game. But I, I do appreciate how well and how hard he works. And I think, you know, that's why he's been able to help the team the way he's been able to. I think Sam attempted 51 passes against Georgia Tech and had printed with six runs, like one was a sack. That's 57 times you get hit. How important is it to you for you to run your offense, be who you are, even knowing that behind him is a questionable situation? Well, uh, two things I would say. One, uh, you never go into a game knowing if you're going to run it 51 times or pass it 51 times. It's really dictated by what the defense gives you. Um, I would also say a number of those throws are just extended run plays in an effort to get our back the ball. So the numbers are a little deceiving. We're throwing it, it counts as a pass, but it's a perimeter run or a vertical run or what have you. Um, the sack that we gave up, a credit to our line, really wasn't them. S Sam snapped or dropped the snap on that particular play, and that's what created the sack. So I was very happy with uh, the execution by our line and our RBs and our tight ends and pass pro. And Sam has also been helping our protection because he's making even quicker decisions now. We're getting rid of the football more like you would want to in, in this system, and it makes it harder to, to scheme know pressures to get to them. But have you tweaked the approach at all because you pretty much have one guy at this point or are those numbers just kind of watching the game would lead one to believe that you really have it you are you are and you're gonna we, we are I mean we're gonna we're gonna be smart about what we do with with uh, any position it that doesn't have depth but uh, I think philosophically it doesn't change what we do from an offensive standpoint I, I don't know uh, if it affects my play calling or not really we, we, we got to call and do what we got to call and do to win the game. You know, and so that's 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 kind of the approach right now. Joe, the young quarterback, what sort of things with the offense as a whole did you address off week just in what's good, what's bad, what you need to do better the last six weeks? I, I, you know, every coach looks at their position and we evaluate it and you know, there's certain techniques maybe in your power play or in four verticals or in the screen that um, – because you, you go back and you watch every play and you look at what – what area in this play is, is uh, not helping us execute or be as efficient or as productive as we want to? And of course, some plays are running really, really well right now and some we're not. <clears throat> and you decide we either want to eliminate them because it doesn't fit the character of our team or we don't have the ability really to execute it. Or, hey, you know what, there's a couple things that we can just tweak this or improve this. It's going to make this concept better and it'll be a better play for us in the second half. So this bye week comes at a, a very opportunistic time. It's halftime of the season and it's given us a week to evaluate our own offense like we do most of the time after the season and then try to improve on the areas that you're taking every weak link and trying to make it a little bit stronger that makes your whole system stronger so that was the approach last week and this week has been all 100 percent Virginia Tech. How has uh, Bo Corrales progressed from the spring up till now? Well he has I mean he, he, uh, he had a decent spring um, Truthfully, and I told him this, I wanted to, I wanted to see more and get more out of him in all of his camp. Uh, but uh, you know, he has a knack on game day. He's made a, a number of big time contested catches for us on big downs. Um, he's blocking well. He's running good routes. He's doing the things that we would ask of our right wide receiver. And I think he's a really good complement now to to Downey Brown. And I think the uh, the return of Antoine Green helps us spell and provide even more depth for the wide out position. So I think I think that's going to help Bo and it's going to help Naomi. But they may play a few re less reps during the game, but they're going to be fresher while they're playing. So hopefully that it helps their, their productivity. Has Javante's production uh, surprised you? No. No, I, I think uh, I just got to make sure we do a good job of continuing to feed him the football. You know, uh, he's, uh, he's really physical. He 
plays with a really low pad level. Um, with the exception of one play all year, he secured the football. Uh, no, there's total trust in, 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 in putting the ball in his hands. He's a good pass protector. Um, we saw that in the spring. We saw that in August. And so what he's doing now is not a surprise. It's just what we're hoping to get out of him. You hope that what you do in practice translates on game day and for Javante it has. What has the offensive line done the last two games to kind of take the collectively step forward? Well, a couple of things. A part of it is we're, we're healthy now. You know, we, we were not healthy in the in the early stretch. And the last two games, we've had a lot of continuity because we're playing the same five, six, seven guys. <coughs> That's, the other thing is the emergence of two more guys that gives us a chance to spell somebody if we need to. So we've had we've had seven that we played in, in the last two or three games, and it's really helped the overall production up front. And you know, without having to roll through different guys due to injury, it, we we got some continuity. Guys are getting used to playing next to each other, and so uh, that that's probably been the biggest positive. And, and Coach Cyril's doing a heck of a job coaching them up. So I think uh, we'll play call to keep things simple for them, and. and Try to stay healthy, and I think that bodes well for us up front. What kind of challenges does Virginia Tech's defense pose for your offense? A lot. I mean, they're uh, they're going to crowd the box. They're going they're going to force you to uh, make sure that you stay on blocks and you finish in an effort to be able to run the football. Uh, twenty three and twenty two play off of close to the line of scrimmage. Both of them are are exceptional football players. Uh, number one, the safety we think is very very good. Uh, he'll be out the first half of the game against us uh, this Saturday, but um, he's a good one. And, uh, you know, he does a good job off the edge at the DN spot. So they're going to crowd the box. They're going to they're gonna challenge us to win physically and in an effort to run the football. Uh, and then, you know, with, with so many guys around the box, if your answer is to throw the football, then they're close enough to, to pressure you too. So we're going to have to win the battle at the line of scrimmage. I think Sam's going to have to quick trigger the ball and, and we're going to have to do a good job establishing the run game in the first quarter, the first half, to, to be able to do what we want to do offensively. What have you seen out of Dax Holyfield this year? He was a guy that UNC recruited very heavily. I can't say guy is linebacker first, but you know, second Dax. I mean, I mean, he does a good job. He's a high effort guy. He's uh, they're splitting time right now with number thirty four. So we're either going to see him in the box or, or number thirty four. And thirty four is probably a little bit quicker, not quite as big. He's a better change of direction guy for them. Whereas uh, you know, four is probably a more you know more physical guy when they want that kind of player at that position. How do you coach? Uh, I just want drops out of your receivers. How do you coach the drops out? Yeah. Well, you know, the big misnomer is drops are all about whether you have good hands or bad hands, and it's not. It's it's eyes and focus. That's what changes it. And so we we have addressed that with all all kinds of different things during the week. But it, it really comes down to receivers focusing in on the ball and finishing the catch. And if that's just discipline, it's eye discipline, and it's it's uh, it's focus on the football. And, uh, we had more last game than I would care to have. Uh, typically, though, with this group, when you emphasize something, you get it. So the emphasis has been securing the ball and finishing the catch. And so I would hope that that's an area that we improve on going into the Virginia Tech game. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <coughs> Good